But I also did say I'm going to be creating content for Star Citizen. Fact is, I've had a break for several months, and you know, the F8C was just a little bit of a blessing. I mean, and again, how cool is it that that has come out? But to touch on a bit of a serious topic first, I have forfeited and transferred ownership of my Discord. For those of you who are concerned and worried, I'm fine. It's just it's something I've been thinking about for a little bit. And I think it was just time for me to step back for a little while and sort of take social media a little bit out of my life because I feel like Discord has taken a little bit more of my time than what it should. And I think it's just something that I've needed to do for a while. I will be in from time to time. I do have an old account in that Discord, which I don't use. But again, no need to be concerned about me. If you have any mental health issues or you need someone to talk to, again, Please never, um, you know, feel afraid to reach out because honestly, if you need to talk to someone and you don't have anyone to talk to, I'm more than happy to be that person. But again, I'm more than respectful to understand that if you don't want to talk to anyone about it, just please see a professional. That's one of the main things I really wanted to stipulate because it's, I know it's a struggle for people and I know that you just need to get it off your shoulders. Everyone does. But to get over that, um... Yeah, I know I said I was over to Star Citizen, but we're going to get straight into this. We're, we're, we're delaying this. So CitizenCon and the like the F8C. So you all have an opportunity to get your own F8C, and that's fantastic. I'm trying to get my executive edition, so what is it? Um, anyway, so the F8C, you have an opportunity to go on a hunt and find a gold ticket. Now, I've been getting a few of these, and I've been helping people get it. I need to redeem one myself so I can get the Spectrum Badge. But you can have the opportunity to buy one if you redeem it in-game um, and also rent one. If you get it on Warbond, it's LTI. If you get a Platinum Badge um, token key, which you need to kill a dev to get, um, you get a limited paint and you get the ship free of charge LTI. Which is really cool, I guess. But it's going to piss a lot of people off, I ain't going to lie. This thing is absolutely riddled with freaking weapons. Like, it's amazing. It does 850 MS on Daymar. Like, what? So, it's got two size two shields. It's a heavy fighter. It has one crew complement, obviously. Um, speed 212 MS. It's got um, two size two repeat repeaters on the nose. It's got two size three ballistic cannons on the wings with two size two ballistic cannons. Missiles, two size four quad racks with four size two ignite missiles. So, I think there's like eight missiles in total. So, four per rack. Um, and then you got one size two remote gimbal with two times size two repeaters on it, and it kicks ass. Like it's an awesome ship. I ain't gonna lie. I really do enjoy my F8C. I was kind of surprised that they brought this out. Obviously, I've been really out of touch lately. Now, going on to CitizenCon, there's been a lot of speculation around this. So, obviously, you've seen the day one schedule, right? And you've seen day two, and there's a little bit of an opening in there. Like, what? What is it? What is it? Is it just like? Um, free time, what is it, you know? Is there a little bit of a Squadron 42 thing in there? But let's get straight into it. So we've got Shaping the Verse, the future of Star Engine, I guess. So from panel to persistent universe um, and everything in between, join us as we showcase all the power and depth of Star Engine, enabling the seamless scale that push our games to the cutting edge of the industry, technology, and beyond. Now, hopefully this is something to build on their current game engine, um, something that's actually going to make it a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more um, playable, and, you know, going into the whole, like, in-depth gameplay part of it. I don't know. But anyway, let's get onto it because I have some other interesting topics I want to touch on. Fix it and fly it. Want to get a look at resource management in action. Here we showcase an exciting upcoming gameplay role that shakes up the vehicle experience, continues our journey towards multi-crew gameplay and affects all life in the verse as we know. Now this, fix it and fly it, I feel like this would be the perfect showcase to demonstrate an old concept ship e.g. the Polaris or some other ships that we have in concept or possible straight to flyables but I feel like this will demonstrate a ship that we have not seen yet or one that we have seen and we are rather anticipative of getting so I feel like this year is going to be a big year we got the F8C everyone like that <laughs> that's amazing I, I find that to be amazing going on you have a lunch break and then this is the part I want to talk about Talking Ships 2953, presenting this year's newly released vehicles with a focus on how they um, 
like how law of the past is shaping vehicles in the future as well as a look at the pipeline itself and the new methodologies within now i'm particularly interested in this as you all know i do a lot of ship content and this interests me because they do a lot of straight flyables here a lot of concepts and a lot of old concept ships as well whether or not we see anything about the 600 i rework i'm not 100 percent sure but i feel like there's gonna be a lot of focus around old concepts and possibly new straight flyables but again this is going to be an interesting citizen con i feel like they're going to try and make a bit of a a note of how this year and next year is going to go so this will be a good indicator of that so navigating the universe this is the next one travel with us as uh, to the forefront of navigation with a look at evolution of UI features that help players view, engage, and interact with their surroundings, offering exciting new perspectives on the Star Citizen universe. So, again, this could be new systems, Pyro, EG, all the jump points that we've been getting, Nix as well. So, I hope that this is something to do with that and that, you know, we can really get a good look at what we're to expect within the next few months in terms of gameplay, because honestly, I'm quite interested in that. Um, and the next part is where everyone's sort of speculating. It's a couple of parts in here, actually. So, navigating to the universe to where the venue closes for the day, there's about, what, two, three hours in the middle where there's nothing there. So, what could this be? Could this be that there's not going to be any more panels? People are free to go around to the community, um, like, venues and have a look around. And then tomorrow they, like, they start it up again. Or is there going to be a secret panel in there touching on Squadron 42? I don't know. There's a lot of speculation about it. I don't want to jump straight into it and assume this. But, again, it could just be a bit of a break for the day and let everyone have a bit of a rest and enjoy themselves. So going on to the next day, you got character advancement. So the doors open at 9, character advancement at 11. We explain the outlaw styles found on the far frontier. Um, the new technologies enabling our next generation of character customization and the much anticipated arrival of diverse coiffure. Coiffure? I don't know. Queef? I don't know. Someone correct me. I don't I don't know. I don't care. Um, so this could be again Pyro, Nyx, all because it's a lawless system, right? It's a new frontier. Something that we haven't really come into yet, and the new generation of character customization. I feel like this is probably going to be quite intricate, quite detailed, something that we have not expected. A lot of new tech coming in, right? Um, I did that video earlier on in the year, what we can expect for 4.0. Maybe they've expanded on that. Maybe they've taken some stuff out, and maybe they're going to surprise us with a few things. But again, going to be awesome. Next one is life in first person. In the first person, get up and close personal look at upcoming major improvements to first person gameplay, diversified combat AI behavior, overhauled weapon handling, and how we've shaped how we we are shaping a more immersive, dynamic universe through seamless and tactile interactions. Again, something to do with FPS. It's going to be improvements to hopefully the engine. Um, so. Again, going to be a lot of improvements to the AI as we know they're kind of dim-witted right now and hopefully uh, server meshing kind of helps this as well. Continuing on taking flight, we're launching into a new iteration of Star Citizen's flight experience and explore impending improvements of every aspect of space and atmospheric traversal, combat and interaction. So again, um, something to... Could be new HUDs coming up, uh, MFDs, all that sort of stuff, everything to do with ships and just potential gameplay um, styles and saying that's a new iteration again they are always expanding on this they're always changing it it's not ever going to be the same at one time it's always going to change so going on you got a lunch break and then next you got living on the edge so we delve into the living conditions and environments of outlaw settlers trying to carve out an existence beyond the safety of the UE mega corporations and other com confines of the 30th century society so again pyro um, Nix, all those lawless systems that we could expect, and maybe a few little surprises. I feel like there's going to be a few surprises at this show, like they always do, but this being that, you know, it's going to be where people are actually at the event, they're going to really try and blow people's minds, and hopefully not try and deceive us and lie, but again, really try and get the community to go wow, and sort of blow our minds later on. Uh, next one, destination adventure from high up in orbit down the surface of our planets and deep into the underground. We delve into new interactions, missions, gameplay coming to Star Citizen Universe on all levels. So this could again go back to where we had those um, subterranean bases where there are pretty much cities underneath and 
delve into that and sort of the new missions that are sort of coming on um, later that year. And again, hopefully this is something that we can all expect to be quite immersive, quite like wow-ish. And again, they're moving into like, it's pretty much going to be a new generation if they pull this off. I'm going to remain skeptical until I actually see any evidence or any gameplay style or any updates, like firm updates that this is happening. Let me know what you all think of this. I'm very interested to see what you all have to think about this. If you haven't joined Star Citizen, use my referral code um, down in the description. That would really help. And yeah, uh, pretty much from there, the go the clo you got the closing ceremony. Um, venue closes and then there's a VIP after party. So hopefully that goes well. Hopefully Chris gets drunk and you know drops his guts about everything and tells everyone what's going on. But again, oh, I don't hold my breath. Hope you all enjoy. I'll see you in the verse, and I hope you have a great day.